Hi, this is Paul Frields. I wanted to give you a quick look at uh, kind of a cool sound that I put together. Um, I'm using UVI Falcon here. Uh, this is hands down my absolute favorite desert island synth. There is pretty much nothing you that you can't get done with Falcon. I could probably go on here for minutes and minutes and minutes about all the things it does. I'm going to skip right over that, but I'm going to tour you through uh, this sound that I made. It's just kind of a kind of a neat um, sort of chimey, grainy, interesting sound, and it's uh, it's something like this. <laughs> Yeah, so something uh, you know has a it has some character to the to the front end, but then it also has this really nice long, lingering, uh, grainy character as well. Uh, and I'll show you where all that comes from. So I'll just tour you through this real quick to show you what's going on. Um, I've got a few different oscillators. These are just mapped across the keyboard. Nothing special there. Um, got a couple wavetables. I'm using this one called Alien, uh, and then I'm modulating the the index of the wave table itself, the position. Um, We've got a second wave table. Uh, this is actually just a, a static uh, a square wave with a little bit more character than the built-in square oscillator. I really like it, this uh, this Mamie square. Um, and uh, then finally, a, a third oscillator, which is just a sine oscillator. Um, this is tuned down. Uh, if you look over here, you'll see that, um, uh, if I unlink this, you'll see that this is tuned down 12 semitones. Um, and so that just gives a little bit more weight uh, underneath. It's it's uh, it's mixed down quite a bit. If, again, if I unlink these, you'll see that the mixing on these, uh, the first oscillator is about 6 dB down. The square waves about 24 dB minus 24 dB, and uh, same for the the sine. So um, those are just to give a little more character to the sound. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm running those uh, first through uh, diode clipper. Um, adding some drive and just a little bit of asymmetry, um, and uh, I've I've lowered the tone just a bit and uh, and bring back the gain, so there's not so much volume. Um, and then I'm running that through an analog crunch. Uh, again, a little bit of gain, a little bit of overdrive and trash. Uh, just again, just enough to give it some character, not go over the top. And um, again, uh, lowering the gain at the uh, at the end, uh, so it doesn't get too loud. And then I'm running through that through a couple filters. Um, first, a high pass filter just to cut off the, the very bottom lows. I'm not looking for a lot of low information because the intent is that this is used more in the upper register and I don't want to muddy, uh, muddy up a, a track too much with it uh, by default. And doing a little bit of key tracking so it, it picks up a little shimmer on the high end. And um, then I have a digital filter. I'm running this uh, band pass filter uh, at 12 dB. Um, frequency is fairly low and I've got a little bit of spread on it and I've turned up the cue a bit just so that it, it raises the the low and the high end just a, just a tad and it's about five and a quarter octaves wide and uh, then with that key grip I'm running through uh, I'm sending that up to the layer level and at the layer level um, I'm just doing some simple maximization um, this just helps me get a little more body out of the sound so uh, it has a little bit more fullness um, and uh, and takes off uh, a, a bit of the dynamics uh, so that it's more useful running through the effects. And that's really where all the goodness starts. Like if I turn off the effect rack here, you're going to hear it's it's fairly bare without that. Okay, so not a whole lot going on there. Once you turn the effects rack on, uh, that's where really the fun starts. And if I go up to effects, and you know, of course, there's a there's a dry channel. Um, I'll I'll bring the tree view up so that you can see what's uh, what's happening here with the uh, with the effects. If I run over to layer and open the effects, you'll see that I've got basically six chains going. So the first one is uh, dry. Um, and by the way, uh, yeah, I don't. I th I personally feel like the effect rack is probably one of the most underused. Uh, effects in Falcon. Um, I know there are some people who use them. I love them. Uh, the reason being is that, you know, coming out of, you know, sort of a background in in um, instrumental music, uh, live bands, live sound, uh, you know, run sound and and, and do uh, PAs. I'm kind of used to dealing with effects racks uh, in the past, 
And so this is a really natural way for me to, to run effects. But one of the things I love about it is that you just have, you have this infinite number of effects racks that you can have, and you can run all these things in parallel and essentially send the same sound into a whole bunch of different effects chains. Um, I'm running this one. Uh, of course, there's a dry so that you get the original sound. Then I'm applying some delay and reverb to those. Uh, and I can, here's a bit of what it sounds like without any of the other grain stuff added. And as you can see, there's a, or as you can hear, there's a healthy amount of modulation uh, going on there in the, uh, in the delay. Um, I'll run over here so you can see what's happening here. So I've got a dual delay X. Uh, this is just a absolutely fantastic delay engine. I believe that UVI sells this as an as a separate plugin. Uh, well worth it if you're looking for a full featured delay. May not be the prettiest thing in the world, but it is absolutely fantastic sounding. And it's got great options. One of them is uh, the modulation here. So I'm doing some some pretty pretty fair amount of modulation, you know, three cents here. And I'm uh, doing some filtering as well in the sound. I'm cutting out a bit of the very lowest lows and cutting out a good bit of the highs back to just under uh, 2K. So, you know, it really kind of builds the character in the body of the sound, as it were. Of course, I've got a reverb going. Uh, this is another effect. I believe that UVI sells this separately, but it comes free in Falcon. It's the Spark Verb which is an amazing reverb that has, uh, again, just a ton of options here and uh, just so much fine tuning that you can do with it. Uh, and it is uh, fairly easy on your CPU for sounding as amazingly good as it does. So I'm just adding a, a big bunch of, of reverb here. Um, but as you can see in the mix, you know, I'm, I'm cutting back on the cutting back on the signal a bit so it doesn't overwhelm the the sound, uh, it kind of really fills in around it instead. Then I've got three other, um, uh, three other effects here. So I've got a grains high, a grains low, and a grains fifth. The grains high, and they're all, they're all fairly similar. I'm using this new granulizer effect. And basically this builds grains out of the incoming sound. So it is acting like an effects unit. Uh, so it it deals with the live sound coming in. It's not a granular generator or oscillator. It is something that samples the sound coming in and then builds grains out of that. So I have this one tuned up uh, an octave um, with a little bit of fine adjustment here and, and some spread it just gives it a little more character. Um, and uh, you know, they're running backwards uh, so that it, it, it uh, sort of plays against the original sound, hopefully, and with a bit of feedback as well. And I'm running that through the digital EQ here. Um, so I'm doing that so that you can, uh, again, carve off some of the, the lows and the, high, and the highs uh, in the grains themselves. And I'm running those through a delay as well to smooth that out. And if I run through these other um, grain effects racks, I'm doing basically the same thing. The difference in this grains low, instead of tuning up an octave, I'm tuning down by an octave or down by 12 semitones. A um, couple other things are, you know, I've tweaked these other dials just a bit from the, the grains lows or from the grains high, uh, so that it's a little bit different. And then I'm also, um, you know, again, just to give some body, um, I'm adding uh, a, a, a fifth above or, se or seven semitones. So I'm adding a little bit here as well. And as you can see in the mix, um, the high and, and low grains are, you know, seven, seven and a half, eight dB down. And then the fifths, I'm you know, really kind of bringing back the um, bringing back the volume uh, at uh, minus twelve and a half dB, uh, and hope so. At the end of it, you know, we'll you'll hear hopefully the whole the whole smorgasbord here. <laughs> So kind of a cool sound. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I do have some, uh, obviously there are some modulations and things going on, um, you know, down here at the bottom, you can see that I've, you know, on top of the, there's the amp envelope, of course, but I'm also um, doing a little bit of modulation here. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm basically modulating both the wavetable and sort of the tone 
um, of the uh, of the wavetable generators and also have uh, a bit of pitch wobble here so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using a uh, a sample and hold um, I've turned the um, the frequency down to nothing so essentially each time I hit a key you get a new sample value and that sample value uh, is modulating the pitch and the range that I'm using for this is actually very small it looks you know it's just about 39 cents uh, which is 39 39 one hundredths of a semitone but then I'm really only modulating about 18 percent depth of that um, so it's really kind of cutting it back down to like I don't know what that is uh, quick math in my head I don't know out of 40 a fifth of that less than a fifth of that so it's less probably more like six or seven um, uh, cents that it actually ends up modulating and it's just enough to give like some variability and induces that sort of drifty sound where you've got you know oscillators that are that are off they're not quite firing on pitch and so again it sort of um, builds the body and, and gives it more of an analog warm character uh, so hopefully this will give you some ideas uh, for your own creations i i hope this inspired you to do something of your own and uh, if you do uh hope you'll share it and again uh, I, I love UVI Falcon. Can't recommend it enough. I'll, I'll include a link to that in the video description if you're interested to get it. If you are a Pro Tools user like me, Falcon, uh, up until this year, came free with your Pro Tools uh, Studio or Above subscription. Unfortunately, that has been discontinued, but Fal uh, UVI is still running a special where if you are a Pro Tools user, you can upgrade to a full version of Falcon. I have to tell you, it is absolutely worth it i have gotten so much more than my money's worth out of falcon again it may not be the prettiest synth out there but it is absolutely one of the most powerful uh one of the most powerful tools that you'll be able to use for sound design highly recommend picking it up and i hope uh hope this inspires you to whether you get it or not make something cool and uh yeah until then enjoy